Do you know the concept of make file in front end VLSI design? Do you know the make file can save the time for a design and verification engineer? Do you know how the make file is bare essential in design automation? Stay tuned till the end of the video to know all the answers. Hey guys, welcome back. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the below points. First, we'll understand our HDL simulation in a very simple manner. Next, we will talk about the compilation step. Next, we will talk about the elaboration step. Next, we will talk about the simulation step. And after discussing all these points, we will finally conclude the reasoning behind the make file automation. So that's the menu for today. Without any further delay, let's begin. So let's understand the HDL in a very simple way. And when I say simple way, I mean super simple way. HDL files. What are the HDL files? Either you are coding in Verilog or you are coding in VHDL or it may be system. These are the HDL files. Are text files that look like software, but they are actually used to describe the hardware. Why we are talking about this line? It's a similarity between your C programming code versus the HDL code. Generally, the C programming is written to define a software operation, but for HDL, it is for a hardware operation. Next, digital designs consist of multiple HDL files that from a top level. Top level means we have a approach in VLSI to design from the top level, top down or bottom up. So we are talking about the top down approach and from there we start at the top level, which is the top of the tree hierarchy. Generally, if you are simulating in Verilog or VHDL, whatever language, in generally in the VLSI companies, you will find about the top dot Verilog or top dot VHDL. HDL. These are the top modules. Before a digital design can be translated into a hardware solution, it must be verified to check its functionality. The top level design is called the RTL code and it can be translated into a netlist by a synthesis. Here is an important thing, a synthesis tool that is used to translate your HDL into actual gate level circuit. In addition to the RTL code, there is also behavioral code like test bench. Generally, you test your design with a test bench so that your functionality is checked at the very basic level. The test bench provides stimulus, that is, the test vectors to the top level design DUT and checks that the outputs are correct. This checking mechanism or the verification is both to the code as well as the human verification. In VLSI, HDL code must go through three consecutive stages, compilation, elaboration, and finally the simulation. This is how we come to the result. Generally, in any standard industrial HDL simulator, you will find these three steps. Either you can find them individually or there will be a wrapper to combine all of them and shoot in one go. However, internally, there will be three different steps. There is compilation, elaboration, and simulation. Now, let's look into each of them. Compilation. RTL and test bench files are text files that must be analyzed before simulation. A parser tool reads every HDL file and checks for correct syntax. Each language has a language reference manual LRM that defines valid syntax. Different versions of HDL languages may have different LRM requirements. This is a very important factor because when the designer is designing, not necessarily the design, all the parts of the design are started from scratch. There could be something that is written there well before that particular designer was hired in the company. So these are legacy codes. So generally, if there is a legacy code, definitely the corresponding LRM will be different. The compiler checks for syntax errors and reports warning and errors. So this compiler, which is included in every standard simulation tool for the HDL, will check errors and reports for different LRM. It could be different. The reporting mechanism could be different. The tool understand that. Before the elaboration, all files, including the RTL and behavioral, must be syntactically correct. So this is the one thing. Before simulation, all the files should be syntactically correct. Otherwise, you will get some errors and you have to troubleshoot it and you, then you will go for the final compilation. Compilation cannot happen with an error residing there. We are done with our compilation definition and details. Let's move on to the next slide. Elaboration. Elaboration, the word dictionary meaning is that we want to elaborate. That means we want to be explicit. Let us see how that actually happens to the HDL. 
All HDL source files are checked for syntax errors, but a design is a group of files that connect in a specific way. In a big design, you will have several instances of different Verilog modules and these files have to be flattened before you can simulate it and that flattening happens at this particular level. If module M and module N has different widths of array of the bits to connect, the elaboration tool will report an error. In code, we are connecting M and N module and the bus width is different. So in that case, the elaboration stage will issue an error. It doesn't make sense to connect an array of 8 bits to the array of 6, the explicit example that I have just talked about in the previous point. The tool could connect them and leave an extra unconnected bit, but that's an arbitrary choice would not make sense in the design. It's a possibility what can happen, but anyhow, we have to stop this kind of mistakes in the design. And when there is a large design in VLSI, these are very, very easy to come because there can be human mistake. A design is correct if the connections are correct and width and direction. Elaboration checks the design and the test bench are consistent and connected correctly. So this is the purpose of the elaboration. Design is connected internally with every module and the test bench is well connected with the design. And there is no inconsistency, whether it's bus, whether it's something else. The final stage of elaboration program is linking the object files to libraries with built-in functions with respect to the simulator program or software. So this is a software step. Basically, there is a linking of the object files. Generally, any software today is an object-oriented one and generally the object files are created. However, we do not manually edit those files or interpret those files. However, those files will be there and will be used in the next step. This produces an executable program that can be directly executed by the computer CPU. Hence, we are prepared for the next step that is simulation. When all the errors in the elaboration stage are overcome and all such errors are attended and fixed, at that stage, the elaboration will successfully complete and will generate an executable program that will be used for the next step that is the simulation. Now, let us see about that in the next slide. Simulation. The executable binary created in the elaboration stage is ran at this stage. This binary is in turn invokes the simulator and the waveform viewer, obviously in sequence, not simultaneously. A simulator process the test bench code and applies the stimulus, the RTL design and produces the result through a waveform viewer. Remember, all this happens through the object files that has been created in the previous step. That means the, the simulation step do not go back to the RTL code and does everything from there. The things happen from the object file that has been created in the previous stage that is the eleven. A waveform viewer shows the signals in the design and test bench over time. This is the temporal simulation that means it's a transient simulation and the waveforms will show the time variation. For example, an adder that adds two integers together can have its input and output visualized in the waveform viewer. Whatever the circuit may be, you will have a proper time-wise change in the inputs, that is the input vectors and the corresponding outputs. If there are intermediate modules, you will also have the corresponding waveform for their input and output ports. From that, you can see whether the signal is propagating from the input to the components till the output port properly as expected as you have designed. Now here we are done. Let's move on to the next step. Make file automation. So far we have talked about the three basic steps that happen in any of the standard VLSI HDL simulator. Now let us see what is the make file automation and how that actually very very important to accommodate the three steps that is the compilation, elaboration and simulation. There are many steps as well as PDK or DK dependencies, source code paths, environment variables. Now, these environment variables could be due to your design, design technology, or it could be due to tool and tool license demand and everything like that. There could be a long list of the environment variable and tool path and licenses involved in compilation, elaboration till simulation. So there will be a lot of things, lot of things for you to set. It can be difficult to source them and redo the multiple times manually during the entire HDL design and primary test stage. 
the make command along with the make file is one such tool set and helps manage this automation so the make file command along with the make file along with the make file means we also have a physical file where all the make related commands are there all the things that we have talked in this point that is different paths and environment variables all all will be there that helps to manage this automation that means the automation from the compilation then elaboration till simulation make keep tracks of the which part of the codes have changed and only compiles those parts this is a very important thing in a large vlsi design when we have several hundred and thousands of agile codes the make file can keep track of a you have changed in four different files in four different locations and it will identify them and only those identified parts will be included in the compilation for time saving Next, the make program uses a text file called make file to determine how to compile the HDL codes during things like optimization level, whether to include debugging info or any other thing. Make file is a text file which is used along with the make binary and the make file contains all the details that we have talked so far in this. The make file also specifies where to save the output when the simulation is finished. That means you have a particular waveform and maybe some other data files are there which you will need for your analysis. All those things where the output will go as well as the binaries, the data files, the library files and the configuration files. Whatever files will be used as an input to the entire process of combining compilation, elaboration and simulation. All those input files as well as the generated output files will be managed by the make file so that you have a defined structure from where you are pulling the files and from where you are giving the output of the files so that is the beauty of the make and the make file automation i hope throughout the discussion of this slide the things are clear why the make file is used let me summarize here the make file is used to automate all these complex processes so that the human mistake means the mistake done by you as an rtl designer is avoided at any cost and this makes the testing phase of the design in a very smooth fashion. So here we are done with this particular slide. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you very much for watching up to this point and don't forget to like, share and subscribe in case you have some dislikes. Put that as in words in the comment section down below and bye for today.